Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I'm Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at an app that we've just recently made that is called Baby You Can Tune My Car. So let's go to the code now and see what it's all about. All right, so here's the app. Let's try her out in a browser. Open in browser. Baby, you can tune my car. Yes. So you see that? Uh, zooms in and then a button. Now we've got some assets in behind there and our assets are sounds and it can be a little bit heavy. So what we've done is said, baby, you can tune my car, this part. And then when the button comes in, that's when the assets are ready. It's a touch risky. If we had to wait too long, we might want some sort of indication that we're waiting. But they're not so heavy uh, that we, we can't get away with this. So it seems to work even, um, even across the internet. Right now we're local here on our own drive. So what we've done for the local is sometimes um, you want to wait anyway. Let them read, baby, you can tune my car just a bit and then give them the button. So we put a, I think a two second wait on that. So even if the asset's coming right away, we're still waiting a touch until we bring in that button. Now, this is, I would say, a more complete mini feature, uh, as you're about to see. Now, the reason why I'm talking a bit more now is as we go in here, we're gonna hear lots of sound, and that might actually be hard to, to talk over. But anyway, we'll set the scene here. Um, this is a more of a complete mini feature. We've spent some time making sure that we animate things in and uh, tidy it all up so that it, it represents perhaps what, um, what advertising or marketing would expect from a mini feature. I mean, we're maybe missing some logos and things. But uh, here, you'll see as we go in. So are you ready? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, turn the desktop sound down a bit. Well, as a matter of fact, maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll turn my volume down a bit. How do we do that? I have no volume to. Well, okay. We can do it this way. So each of these things represents something. Cool, huh? Now, I don't know if you noticed, but as we turn the volumes down, the car moves less. So now the car is not moving, but if we bring a volume in, that, and here we'll bring in this one, and we can adjust the, the pan as well. Um, the pan works, but maybe not for web audio, Like, but when you upload this on a server, uh, you'll get the pan. Here on my desktop, though, uh, the type of audio that the desktop happens to play is um, does not have the pan. So to get the idea, you and I love the fact that uh, if you bring up a car, and this one is an actual Jaguar, if you bring up a Jaguar, there's one part in the Jaguar that does like this, rawr, like that, just as the car is doing this. Well. It can do it just at the same time. They're out of sync from one another, so it, it, it's a mixture of things. You hear that car that went <laughs> But the Jaguar also does one of those, and I think the very first time these things play through together, they're almost one on top of one another. So that's the idea. Uh, one of the things, anyway, that we're doing is tuning the car. And as the car has all the fault... Oh yeah, there's that Jaguar roll. Um, as the the volumes go up, the car really bounces around. Shall we see that just quickly? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> so, by the way, dials change if you just click on them, but you can also drag these things around. And Normally, you can track these things. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, also, aside from the dials and the tuning of the car, there's a message that goes along here at the bottom that just allows us to put in um, a little bit of extra things for them to watch as they listen to this. What I found is as I tuned it, I really just enjoyed 
listening to what was happening and watching the car shake. Uh, maybe it's just because I made it, <laughs> but hopefully others enjoy that as well. And uh, hearing the mix of the wild animals and, and the actual car sounds um, was a lot of fun. And then I found that if I just added a touch of things to read down at the bottom, and we're getting in a bit of promotional concepts in there, uh, that Zim is really fun to work with. And uh, we've also tried to introduce the word uh, duo and digiduo or a digidu um, as a, there, here it comes now, as a name for these types of things. Now that they sound so silly, like a duo, but if you think about it, you've got an audio, a video, and this is a duo. If it weren't for the fact that Dewey is kind of like a funny name, maybe you think of some, I don't know, 50s guy with grease in his hair. Hey, Dewey, how's it going? But um, other than that, a Dewey-o, video, audio, something that you do would be really handy to have a name for what we do. Like, what do you call this thing? What do you call what you see in front of you? We don't have a name for it. And it's just so annoying. Um, it's a feature, it's an interactive, um, interactive is not bad and probably that's the closest to being accepted in interactive. And I like that. It's just, it's not quite its own word. It's not a word like a song or a film, like these things. Well, film, I suppose is a different term as well, isn't it? But anyway, it's nice when you have, um, a book, like when you have a name for the medium that you're working in, it can help propagate it so that people understand it and we've called our you know we've got interactive media we used to be called new media but you know that, that, that's it's a sort of a title for a genre it's not the the actual item itself that we're making so we're stuck with words like project or feature or site or game and, and one of the problems is like it does encompass things like games and puzzles and and those have names they already had names but this thing that we're looking at right here, it doesn't have a name. So anyway, this is a little hope that we, in amongst the Jigga Jagga Jew, Antonio Cag Cagiano, Doodly Drew, purring in purple and blue, waving to you with wonders of Zim and medallion of gold, the symbol of nodism through which creativity frameworks flow and zany concepts grow at bubbling rates that in the past, were not so fast, such as the zip zap whiz, the wise whiz you'll be when you use Zim to create duos and digiduos for free. So it's a poetic introduction. It's a whole bunch of semi nonsense words that allows me to kind of insert the hopes that a duo or a digidu, a digidu is not bad either. It's it's kind of a fun name, but Maybe it's just not serious enough. It's hard to say. Neil Stevenson called them reactives, which I thought is great. And maybe that's got a chance as well. So instead of an interactive, if we shorten that to a reactive, R-A-C-T-I-V-E, a reactive, that's a possibility. So anyway, enough of that then. But it, it does allow uh, this this feature right here, <laughs> this digidu, allows up to possibly, you know, if, if it were to become famous or well looked at or well liked, then maybe people will start calling it that. Who knows? You know, I'm hoping. Uh, so you go ahead and call it a duo and see everybody goes, what? <laughs> but, it, you know, eventually audio and video kicked in and clicked and, you know, we're, we're still using them. We don't think anything about it. That's how trademarks work. And that's how good trademark work works, actually, is that they, they sound funny, but then eventually they just become the norm, you know. Okay, so let's take a look at this code, shall we? Um, we're not going to code together per se. We're going to look through code. So here is the code we're looking through. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. I think I will. So we're bringing in Zim, and once again, Zim, if you've looked at the old Zims, we used to go to CloudFront on Amazon, but now we're, um, we're hosting locally and, and then uh, sort of making sure that the speed is good with Cloud Cloudflare. <clears throat> so we've still got these access to these out in the, the, the sort of front, the fast front of the internet, but uh, they're hosted locally on our Zim servers. 
So that's been a little bit easier for us. And also note that we've gone to a version as a directory, and then the final, pay, uh, um, final file name doesn't change. That seems to be the norm that most people are going for now. We're in a fit mode. This is normal Zim frame stuff. Uh, and then we're making a background rectangle that has the same frame, uh, color as the frame color. And the reason for that is watch what happens when we don't. So if we don't add that, I don't think I, yeah, I think that's the only place we reference it there. And did I open in a browser? I did. So we re refresh here now. All is good, but we come into here. Uh, I've just turned down the the volume on the browser there. So uh, this is what it would look like if we didn't do that. These stripes require a something in the back before they can have the blend mode applied. And the white background of the frame or any color of the frame is set with a uh, I think it might be set with CSS, uh, CSS color. It's not actually on the canvas. So that means that, um, it, well, if it is on the canvas, it, it doesn't, it still doesn't blend. So you need something put on the canvas to blend. The background color of the canvas is not something on the canvas. So that's why we put a, uh, you can see the blend modes are working when it goes over something, but where it doesn't go over something, such as this white stuff right here, um, the blend mode doesn't work. So we're bringing in a rectangle there. I don't think we ever refer to it again, um, which means we don't really need to store it in a, in a variable. Maybe we refer to it, I'm not sure. But now that we put that back, the um, blend mode works on that white. Okay, so you did get a sense of you know, what those things were doing. These were rectangles that were just placed on a slant like that, and we're wiggling them. We'll see those later as we go down there. Okay, uh, the reason why we just put this first is it's the thing at the very bottom of things. So we're just adding it to the stage. It's, it's in the, the background at the very bottom. We could have added it later. As a matter of fact, at one point we did, when we realized what was going on, and we put a dot bot D, uh, dot, <laughs> dot bot, D-O-T, <laughs> no, uh, period, <laughs> bot, B-O-T, round brackets, and that moves it to the bottom at any time. So at any time you can use bot and top to move something up and down. There's also ORD, O-R-D, and if you go ORD one, it will move it up one layer. If you go ORD minus one, so it's relative movements, the order. Uh, those are short chainable methods. Of course, we could have added to the stage at any time as well. Add to stage zero would put it at zero. Add to stage, add to, add to the stage would just put it at the top of the stage and so forth. But anyway, here we're making it first with an add to. Um, const title. So we've got a title coming in and this is baby you can tune my car with a background color. Great. We've got a font of impact. Hopefully that shows on Macintoshes. I think it does. Impact was overused maybe five, ten years ago. Uh, yeah, ten years ago, something like that. And then they had impact with like um, paint splatter in it and that was overused. But uh, of late, it's been less used, I suppose, and so it's kind of maybe good to bring it back. It is a, it is a lovely thick font. Uh, unfortunately, it is a default thick font, so uh, it may, it, you know, that may have been why it was overused, sort of like Comic Sans and Hobo. And um, I don't even know if Hobo is a default font anymore. <laughs> it's, been, it's been shunned. <laughs> Hobo is a pretty cool font, too, on the face of it, but, you know, it, then got overused. Anyway, in we go. Impact at least isn't, uh, it's just thick. It's not really trying to be anything else. It's a bit thick and thin at the same time, as in it, as the words are squashed together so that you can fit more in a smaller area, but still be thick. Uh, but it is pretty generic. So even though it is used, it, it's sort of like using a thick verdana or something. It's not the end of the world. All right. So we're, uh, what are we doing with this text? We're, oh, adding a shadow on the title, right, because we have done a background color. So a background color is when you put a background color in behind the text, 
we've given that a padding, so that's the padding for it. You can also set a padding vertical, padding horizontal, if you want a specific padding on that. Uh, however, we don't have padding on one side or the other. There is a, an indent or something like that that you could probably play with and get whatever you wanted to uh, on on that text. But there's the background color, and, and therefore we're putting a shadow on that as well. So this is all showing our very first, first panel that comes in, this one right here. So you see that light shadow that's uh, going underneath there. This is the that's the text itself and take a look at what we've done we've skewed it so and give it a slight rotation as well so just in these few things here um, just in these few things here that doesn't look like a normal text field you know what I mean it's it's given it some design I like it I don't often skew things I kind of forget but sometimes uh, skewing things can give this stuff just a bit more excitement much like italic, if you're if you're wanting to get some text to stand out, some italic uh, that's a skew as well. Uh, but here you can do it with panels or anything. You can skew any of the Zim components, etc., and make it look a little bit different. Just go easy on it. Usually, they don't skew past ten. But uh, as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but when we start this up, let's start this up. Watch up here. Right there. So that was a skewing animating in of the little Zim icon here. We skewed that. We animated the skew. We are animating this as well. Um, right there. Dot animate. Let's tuck that down here so we can see it. Dot animate this stuff right here. Um, usually when I tuck things down, I'll tuck... I, I tuck everything down sometimes. If these are all flat, I'll leave a flat row like that and then a, an opened up row. Um, anyway, so we're animating in the scale and the alpha at the same time. Sometimes animating a scale from a zero scale is a little bit over the top. You know, then you see an animation come in from nothing. And so I've usually now, I, 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 um, lessen that effect. It's not, it's not coming in from nothing. It's coming in from a 0.2 scale. You probably can't notice that, but I have noticed it in the past. That I don't like it when something comes in. Do you want, do you want to see what that looks like without the alpha? So if we had a, um, animating in from a scale of zero here like this, watch what happens. So we refresh here. Well, it was so quick you can't even really see. I'll slow that down maybe. Uh, 1,500. But if it's so quick and you can't see, then maybe it's not a big deal. So there is the the animation in from really small like that. And sometimes you end up seeing it look like really puny. And I, I don't know. It's okay, but it's just a bit much. So instead, uh, I animate in from a point 0.2. And let's slow that down and see what that looks like. Refresh. So it's already mostly there as the alpha uh, comes up. Uh, no big deal. Uh, we're dropping that to speed. Watch your speed on that. Some people, when they start and they've got animations, their animations are always too slow. Uh, they think, oh, I'm doing an animation. Let the people see the animation. That is really not the point. The point is actually to not let this, the people see the animation, to just have it happen without you even really realizing it. Just give it a punch and energy. It's almost like a subliminal animation or a peripheral animation. So uh, take take what you think your your animating speed is and probably cut it in half. There. <laughs> so finish your app and say I'm finished, and then go back and cut all your animation speeds in half, <laughs> or maybe even uh, to a quarter. Okay. Um, here uh, are the assets that we're bringing in: the car image, the two car sounds. Now, what I did to get these sounds, I went onto YouTube and I did some research on uh car sounds and also animal sounds so that was a lot of fun i took those animal sounds i do have the adobe suite to be able to edit these things i'm not sure without adobe there's probably ways to animal i'm sure there's ways to animate sounds but um i happen to have the adobe suite so uh, there is addition and if I'm really doing a lot of work on sound I'll use addition but usually I'm in Premiere since I'm making videos a lot and editing videos 
um, a premiere is really easy to work with cutting up snips of sound and crossfading them and stuff. It's dead easy. It's uh, and then you can export it as an mp3 and it's absolutely no problem. I find addition is a bit of a pain. Half the time I go in there it doesn't remember what my sound settings are or something for crying out loud. <laughs> but uh, Premiere I think it's a little bit easier. So and plus you've got YouTube videos. So uh, if you're if you're able to scrape YouTube videos that's what I've got. I've got an app that that can um, bring YouTube videos down, and that includes sound as well. So uh, then you throw the videos in and you just use the sounds, that's all. So these came from, from YouTube. Uh, cheers to the creators of these, like, <laughs> which are cars and wild animals, but I mean, somebody did record them. So uh, hopefully that's all right. I've, I've taken little snips out of that. I, I don't think there's going to be a problem. We're not really a for-profit thing. But if you are for-profit, then um, you know make sure that you're paying the people. Paying the people. This car, by the way, came from Antonio, um, and he did the Dr. Abstract and, and Pragma images and animations on the website. Um, and we paid, we paid him for that. And so it's always good to make sure that your artists get paid. Um, and we're loading those from the assets folder. Now, oh, over the last couple of years in Zim, we've been loading things in through the frame. So we could have put the assets up here and then pass them in, uh, here's arguments, uh, assets and path right in here, as well as if we needed to a progress bar. But on this, in this case, we're close. We don't have too many assets, but these sounds are 500K each, or were they more? I can't remember. Um, so there might be a wait period, but rather than, uh, so we could have gotten away with a little loader or a little um, waiter, and there are the three dots. But rather than do that, we decided to present the name. And plus, we're we're building this for um, for CodePen, and CodePen doesn't really do well with uh, images that are lo loaded in because it has this preview. It has an animated preview of how your app starts, and if you're loading in images, you end up seeing nothing. So because we're making it for CodePen, we needed people to see something first. So we animated in. The, um, the the title, uh, Baby, You Can Tune My Car. We had a title and we thought, hey, that's almost exciting enough or it's, uh, we'll put that first before we load the assets. So all of that earlier stuff, the title comes before we load the assets. And then we capture a frame. This is how we did, did assets in Zim for the first couple of years of Zim with a specific frame.load assets. And what we found was half the time uh, we were just capturing the frame and then loading the assets. So we had this double event, an event within an event, and it was just hard, harder to teach that. We had to, you know, that people had to get used to uh, down at the bottom of this thing. Woo this is the bottom. Oh, we got some ways to go, don't we? <laughs> we'll have to make this a two-part explore. But down at the bottom, we have an end of ready and we had an end of a knit and these, are, well, actually that's calling an init function. Anyway, these, these would be bumped together and, and people would look at double sets of brackets kind of like that and go, ah. Um, so in the end, we put the, uh, and, and, and the main reason why we had some some difficulties uh, initially was the fact that if we put the assets up and nothing is happening, if we put the assets in the frame, the frame is what makes a stage and shows the things. If we do put the assets up there, we can't show anything while it's loading. So then that was what um, always stopped us from loading the assets in the frame in the first place, is if you do that, you have nowhere to show a loading thing. But then we realized, okay, well, maybe if we made the next parameter a loading thing, <laughs> then we can show that automatically just on nothing. And indeed, that's the way we've done it. And consequently, what I'm seeing out there a lot uh, when people are making their Zim sites is the first thing that anybody sees is this box with three dots in it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's the Zim waiter. So, um, you know, they're they're loading it in there and they get to see the Zim waiter. It's, it's, not, it's not too bad. Sometimes I... I wish if they're showing this orange waiter and their app is blue or something, you know, that maybe they would have um, 
change the color of that waiter. <laughs> so if you use a waiter, please color code your waiter. It's easy enough to pass in a color for that. And then I'll at least be seeing a bit something different rather than an orange progress bar. Um, hint, hint. So uh, anyway, once we did that, or there's a progress bar and a waiter, either one could be passed in there. Once we did that, it became, I think, the, the standard way of adding in assets is just do that through the... Um, through the frame up here. Anyway, now we're back down. We're uh, on this delay. When our frame is complete, we call a knit. Uh, normally, we wouldn't have called a knit there. We would have called a function, an anonymous function like that, and that would have led to a, that double set of brackets. In this case, we were trying out a couple different things, and we had put in an init function uh, because what we were doing is uh, it was kind of like, hey, uh, we want to make sure that we wait enough time. So I was putting in a timeout and calling in init or a load and calling in init and then putting a check variable in there to see if it's already done in it, don't bother, that kind of thing. And then I remembered this thing right here. So what this is, is a, in the frame.load assets, uh, there's a couple more parameters there. can't remember what they are, but this one says, uh, even though it's loaded, wait this long until you fire the loaded event. And what that allows you to do is put a, a loading message that people can read, uh, at least have that up there this amount of time. So at least one second so they get a glance. I don't know if you've seen loaders before where something flashes in front of you and then, and then it's gone. And you're kind of going, what was that? And it was probably a load message, but because the graphics or whatever got loaded so quickly, um, there was no time to read it, and I don't like that. So this was, if, if you want, you could sit that at um, three seconds or something like that. Uh, let's put it at five and run the thing, and we'll see. So this is five seconds. Here's what five seconds would load. So you see this button won't come in until five seconds later. There it is. Uh, another thing that allows you to do is um, emulate or simulate uh, a load time if, if you wanted to. You could put a progress bar in there and actually see the progress bar going and it would only finish once uh, once this time finishes here. So we've set that for at least one second which might be enough or should be enough just to quickly see that title before it uh, animates out. You have a little bit extra time too because that title is going to animate out. So now that we're in the init then Here's a button and it says yes. Oh right, you definitely get to see that title because this button is still on its way in. Uh, we toyed a little bit with this button thing. Maybe it, it could have been tune or tune exclamation mark. And then you've got this. Baby, you can tune my car, tune. And just decided that um, it didn't it wasn't quite as fun or friendly as yes, but there it could have also been go or something like that. You you want usually a call to action, and yes isn't quite a call to action, but it's almost like a response. Oh yeah, you know, baby, you can tune my car. Sure, I'll tune your car. Sort of uh, that kind of uh, I don't know. It's like homage, perhaps, to a, a time in the past. <laughs> you know, when tune your car meant something. <laughs> <laughs> These days, you'd get sued for harassment, probably. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to make light of that, of course. Um, there are certainly many times where you, we've stepped over the line in the past. Um, so, uh, yes, goes there. We've got a slight corner going in there. That seems to be the style these days. This is gone. You know, the 20 corner. I, uh, this button has been... Uh, so there's a 20 uh, corner button, you know. Ugh. It looks blunt. Uh, or a pill or something. Well, pills are even worse when you go half the half the height there. What is the height of the button? I don't know what the default height is. I think it's 60, so that means it would be 30. That would be a, a full pill. Although we are also, yeah, there's a rounded pill kind of thing. Um, not so much. I'm all for the square and have been for almost my whole life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've been square all my life. I like the square. Uh, in this case, I found that the square, because you've got a panel in behind that's the same, that is not a button, 
I found that the square was a touch confusing on it, so just put a little bit of a corner on there to emphasize that perhaps that's different than the panel up above. And there's our subtle button. This also seems to be the current style. is a very uh, small corner, like a corner of four on a button. You know what? I'm kind of telling that this uh, that I'm in the mood to uh, shoot the breeze, so to speak, <laughs> to just say whatever's on my mind in this explore, and that may lead to a lengthy explore. I mean, I don't want you guys um, sitting around going, "My gosh, will this ever end?" Uh, but on the other hand, it's um, neat. Why don't we turn it into a, a series then, like a little three-part or something like that, and. We'll end this uh, pretty soon. How about we'll end it once we get into the next uh, screen? That sounds pretty good. Another thing is if I go on and on and on, it's possible that I might make a mistake. Sometimes we do make mistakes. It could be a mistake talking to you about mistakes. Oh, no. Is it a mistake talking to you about talking to you about making mistakes? Oh, no. Um, yeah, so it may be that I make a mistake if we go on too long. So sometimes it's good to kind of cut it. <laughs> Cut it a bit short in that way. Uh, uh, well, anyway, I'm, I'm sure you understand. Possibly you understand. So we're back into code here. And we're animating in the button as well. We've skewed the button. and We've rotated it. Uh, that's the same skew in the rotation as the, the top part of the panel there. And we've moved it down a touch. And we're animating in again with the, the same animation. If we do have the same animation, is it exactly the same? True, 500. No, this one comes in a bit faster. Now we're tweaking this. And this didn't start off this way, but we tweak, we tweak. And sometimes you'll even see that we tweak into the half here. We might go, oh, no, 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 that's good. That's about as far as anybody can really tell. I mean, 50 milliseconds here or there is really difficult to tell the difference. But uh, you kind of can. You kind of get the sense. If you set it one way and it goes, no, a little bit faster, you set it faster and you go, no, a little bit slower, then you might have to cut that uh, there. But it's sort of like pixel tuning. You know, a little pixel that way, a little pixel this way. And I can usually tune to the pixel. I can usually tune to the 500 milliseconds on what I feel looks good. Oh, brag, 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 post, post, post. Well, I've been doing this a long time for 20, 30 years. That's what happens when you do this for 20, 30 years. Okay, so that's our button. We're throwing on a tap there. Tap is uh, not necessary. We could have put an on click or an on mouse down. If you're on mobile, you probably want an on mouse down. As a matter of fact, I don't know if this is a mobile app. I suppose it could be used on mobile, no problem, like a tablet maybe. Anyway, the, the, if you were going to put a lot of, be doing a lot of button work in, in mobile, you would use a mouse down, not a tap. Tap is handy for things like if you tap on a list, because you want on a list, you want to be able to do the mouse down to scroll the list up and down. Um, and a tap will require your mouse down and your mouse up to be in the same place. Even uh, a click event is bad because a click event, you can click down move the move the uh, the list up and then let up and that still counts as a click so we introduced tap and not only that tap is chainable which is a little bit easy that means we can chain it on and still have access to the button uh, later we've chained it on we're collecting the event object there because note that we didn't even store what the button's called so later on once we tap it we don't know what we tapped on unless we collect the event object and use e.target so we're animating out the button, we're animating out the title, so these things animate them out. Not only that, was once we animate out the title, and we do these slightly at different times too. Look, uh, there's the time, 300, for the, the button goes first. The title waits 200 milliseconds and then goes out. So let's have a look there. I'm going to press this, the button will start to go, then the panel will start to go. Button goes, panel goes, whoomp, whoomp. Okay, gives it some whoop whoop, and now we're we're in to our main animation. So button goes, title goes, and here is where we bring in the car and all that kind of stuff. And I think this is a good time to to end. But just note that our whole app basically is running then once that button gets animated out in this um, anonymous function right here, that arrow function goes right to the end. So all that stuff is in our app. Goes right to the end there. 
or one of these things there and this one I'm not sure what that is but anyway that's the end of animating the title out oh right yeah so that that was a function inside of an animate call this is the end of the animate object and this is the end of the animate uh, method right there that's the end of the tap um, and there's the end of our waiting for our images I guess there's the end of the ready. <laughs> Underneath that, by the way, we've added the two bars. The two bars are going on top of the way we, we've set it up is the two yellow bars go on top of these, uh, the effects in a sense. We did have it for a while where the bars were at the bottom, but uh, and then you can see the effects, these color effects sort of go along the yellow bar, but I decided I didn't quite like that as much. Um, just was too much effects. And I sort of like the effect on the car. I'm not even sure totally if I like that I can see the effect going up through the buttons. I do like the effects on the on the buttons or on the, the dials here, but I'm um, not sure that I like the fact that they're connected by a rectangle. Uh, in the end, I, I think I do. I don't mind it. it. It's fine. I do like the effect though. It's kind of cool. A very simple effect to give things a little bit more motion and add it add a little bit of color mind you the the picture of the car looks great you know <laughs> on its own without the effects as well but i don't think the effects hurt all right let's leave it there then this has been a um uh a, a zim explore and we um are going to uh bring back then the explore page here to show you zim explorer uh, come on into zimjs.com and also take a look on youtube for a continuation of how we brought that car in how we make it wiggle how we operated on those sounds and stuff like that uh, look forward to seeing you then ciao i'm dr abstract have a great night or day bye bye